Hi there, my name is John Park, and welcome to the Mac Demo. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank you guys for supporting me and uh, in making of this video. So let's get started. So typically, um, I work around 4,000 pixels for my canvas size. Um, it's generally a good size for me uh, for high resolution and it's not anything that I would say is for printing but it's really good for clients to receive a high high res photo so they can use it for marketing purposes um, for viewing uh, internally within a company and it's just a good resolution to have so that it doesn't get too pixelated so here I'm starting off with a with a uh, an existing photo um, I'm actually trying to crop out just this figure here because I thought the pose would be really appropriate um, for what I'm trying to go for obviously I'm not going to use the details but I'm just lassoing out and I want to get an exact extraction of this character's pose so you can see here I'm like loosely just trying to get most of the elements extracted out um, I use the magic wand tool to kind of get all of the edges cleaned out I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this and darken down the silhouette and I'm going to choose a, a hard brush here with a little bit of dynamics and I'm just going to go ahead and start editing and uh, manipulating the shapes here so my general thought process for this is I'm actually trying to use <clears throat> the basis of this pose to start thinking about a really cool gesture um, since I wanted to not just draw a silhouette from scratch but possibly use an existing photograph um, you know, maybe just to kind of help aid um, and give a little bit more life to my my pose. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and just start to alter this existing pose here, so I can see where I can take this image into more of a a sci-fi mech related image. Just going to go ahead and clean up some of the edges here. I always like I always like working in this process because it helps me to really visualize kind of the uh, the overall impression and I think it's there's something really important about thinking about the the silhouette of a design uh, rather than getting into you know it, getting into the details of of your design this way I can think about kind of the the broad strokes versus you know getting too specific so I'm just kind of lassoing in and I'm trying to think about negative shapes obviously this um, this female robot trying to make it a sexy female robot um, I obviously want to give give the proportions a little bit more exaggeration so I'm just kind of thinning the legs down a little bit and I'm gonna alter the form and I'm just using the transform tool to really kind of skinny up the top and just add an extension to the arm and I'm thinking that it might be a gun but again at this phase anything goes and I'm just trying to add and alter and just see see what I can actually do to make this thing work so at this phase I mean obviously you know what you guys saw in the beginning all those details it's something that I haven't thought about until I've, I've completed my silhouette so at this phase I'm just thinking about the broad strokes I, I just want to think about what is gonna make this design look cool and I know for a fact that I'm going for kind of the zone of the enders which is my inspiration um, which is basically one of those Japanese anime mechs um, not so much like Gundam but I, I guess it's more of a it, 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 I'm sure it's spawned from that series of mech designs but Zone of the Enders is it's very uh, it's very humanoid based with kind of a twist to mech designs. Um, everything kind of has a, a very feminine aesthetic to the forms. Um, very very angular, very sleek looking, and uh, I wanted to kind of replicate that sort of aesthetic for this demo. So I'm going to go ahead and give it give the character wider panels. And I'm thinking it might be cool to to have you know a little bit more of a of a larger a larger shoulder piece so I'm gonna drop the head down 
add a little bit more a little bit of volume and I think the arm I want to bring it down because it felt too much like the original photo where the the, the, the character was holding a weapon and I think I want to try something different where the pose is a little bit more more standing and maybe I, I'm at this point I'm thinking that it might be cool to add some weapons or something that the character is holding on the side so what's great about this technique is whatever I do it's very very easy for me to add asymmetry just because everything's in black and white everything's all silhouetted and I don't have to really think about the details right now especially the internal details so go ahead and just kinda clean up just some areas and add in more side panels here just to kinda see if, if the shapes work and this is always a balance right you, you know when, when I'm doing silhouettes um, you always want to see you know if something's get too complicated you're able to immediately know if your design is way too simple versus way too complex I'm just gonna give it a slight switch make sure that it looks good left to right so doing the horizontal uh, horizontal uh, canvas um, flip kind of gives us a different point of view to see the image to see if it works and I thought it might be cool to add gun belts there, but it just adds a little bit too much complexity to the silhouette. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding in kind of the angel wings here. And they're kind of like, I guess, I don't know functionally what they really serve. Because um, they're not really, they're not thrusters or anything. Um, but they act as, you know, airplane wings or something. But um, you know, aesthetically, it just has this really cool, cool look to it. I'm just going to flip it and mirror it over on the other side. And I think for the most part, um, this is looking pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup here and adjust some of the silhouettes here on the heel. I think that this can use an additional shape. And I'm thinking, you know, it's just some sort of more of an angular shape here. Just mirror that over and I think it's always good to kind of look at your silhouette as a whole as opposed to getting too detailed so I'm just looking at everything as 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 a whole silhouette and I think that I can definitely use some negative shapes here so I'm gonna try to add a way add to this shape duplicate that just to kind of give it that side panel on the hip maybe some extra pieces here on the side I think that's looking pretty good so this is what we started off with and uh, this is what we ended with for the silhouette alright so let's go to the the reference here I have two sets the first set is um, I have a bunch of reference that I collected and the second set is motorcycles what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna start extracting out pieces that are interesting to me um, and in this process I'm not thinking about anything too specific to a motorcycle but I just want to look at cool pieces and cool opportunities so the panels of a motorcycle have a lot of interesting elements um, there's things like you know that the frame of a motorcycle looks interesting the handlebars um, panels that cover the the uh, the housing of a motor um, there's even the front of this concept vehicle um, the chassis the exposed chassis and frame of an actual motorcycle has a lot of interesting textures so at this phase anything really goes I'm just thinking about really cool materials and textures that looks sci-fi to me and from here I'm gonna take away the yellow because I don't want any of the color to influence my design so I'm gonna go into my hue and saturation drop the drop drop the color down and actually I'm just gonna just desaturate everything here and it's an easy way for me to kind of 
visually keep track and make everything consistent and I can add color in later. Here I have an image of a mannequin and I really like the the kind of reflectivity of this of this mannequin. There's something sci-fi and uh, and I think I can definitely use this as a part of my design. So I'm just pulling out pieces and interesting elements that I think might be useful. So this was an interesting one, one as well. Um, this piece was uh, a mechanical claw or some sort of it, it looks like a claw but I believe it's some sort of um, some sort of joint or uh, connection point um, but there's a company called Festo Designs and they do fantastic mechanical pieces um, that are very very sci-fi looking um, so you don't always have to look for you know car parts or engines or things like that so I'm, you can see that I'm using a variety of not only motorcycles but also weapons weapons as well as well as festo and as well as you know some abstract looking mannequins so I'm gonna use this gun here and most likely I'm probably gonna use the textures for my weapon design and let's just go ahead and start kind of adding to this thing so I'm gonna start adding on top of my silhouette and I'm linking in this image into my silhouette here and basically the way I do it is I grab the image and I press alt and I just link it in to the silhouette and you can see that it doesn't go off of the 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 silhouette image everything stays retained and this way I can actually start stacking images here this is an effective silhouette process that I learned um, back when I was in design school where you basically fill in the blanks and whatever you fill in here I'm able to just imagine what the design could look like so what's great about this is that since all the parts are somewhat symmetrical whatever I put on one side I'm just gonna duplicate over to the other side and notice I'm slightly foreshortening it because it is the character I'm thinking is turning away from us I'm going to utilize the leg. I think this would be a great opportunity to to implement and put onto my character leg. And what I really like about it, other than the fact that it's a leg, but I like the uh, the, the the indication of material that it's slightly reflective. So that was really cool. It worked out really well for me there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this mid torso as just a as just of a a texture that I can put in behind the armor and obviously gotta have it make it sexy with the uh, the chest area so I just duplicated this chest piece and I'm gonna try to make it fit and this part here I'm not too concerned about getting it integrated just yet because I'm actually going to most likely add more pieces on top but I definitely want to make sure that the two blend so I'm just using a little bit of a uh, a round brush here just blending the two use a soft brush and just kind of vignette it up towards the head and I'm not too concerned about everything just working just yet I just want to have all of my major pieces in so let's go ahead and use this piece here and I'm thinking this would be a great piece for the wings just something about that mesh that makes it look very very sci-fi and very interesting so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can position it right. And I'll plot it right behind, maybe onto the top wing here. And flip it over and see how it looks. And what's great is that, you know, everything is trial and error, right? Because I don't know what one piece is going to look like when I add it on. You know, when, when I when I extract these pieces I might have an idea for what might look cool for the uh, the arms or legs but it's not until you try it you're gonna really know so I thought this would be a really cool piece for the head and until I put it on I, I thought it it wasn't quite working the way I thought uh, mainly because of the silhouette what I had and this shape it just didn't quite mesh in well so I'm gonna just form it in as much as I can because I do like that reflective area so I decided to use actually the head the head was a great opportunity to kind of give 
give me that reflective visor look that I was going for. So I'm going to plot that in and erase away at the edges a little bit. But I think what, what a great substitute with that might be is taking part of this bike frame here and actually putting it on the bottom side and let it act as a frame. Just kind of warp it in and I'm going to erase this out and just kind of connect it to and almost kind of imagine it being like a sci-fi mask, you know, like a helmet design. All right, let's go ahead and add some more pieces here. I think it might be cool to add kind of this little vent piece that can effectively be a good shoulder piece or maybe right above right above the chest towards a clavicle or maybe down by the ribs and so there's a lot of opportunities you guys can see just by the way I'm experimenting here and I'm just gonna see if this works use this piece here I'm gonna erase away at the bottom here and I'm just gonna duplicate it to kind of give it that rib like look and that already looks pretty sci-fi, right? Kind of has that really cool techie look I'm going for. Duplicate on the other side, kind of foreshorten it a little bit. I'm gonna take more of this, uh, this texture and add it onto the wing. Now, on this texture, on this part, I actually didn't add it onto my silhouette. I kept it as an independent piece. Um, you'll see here where I'm gonna try to borrow some more pieces here and I'm thinking that You know, maybe we can look for a panel Maybe the front of this motorcycle here I'm gonna Grab this piece and I think this might act as a nice Extended panel for the wing. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it and Stretch it out and it might be appropriate lighten it up a little bit using my levels and that seems to fit just well now I want to get that mesh to continue on so I'm gonna go ahead and sample this other section here and I'm gonna put on top and rotate that image that texture just want to kind of have it make sure that it has a nice transition so I'm gonna erase away a little bit so that it kind of gives it that uh, that same texture running running part way down so it doesn't look so uh, so abrupt you want to give it kind of that illusion that it's it's all one piece I'm gonna go ahead and, and just kind of stretch the texture out a little bit and then what I'm doing here is I'm actually using the smudge tool to really get this texture to to continue on so it feels like all one integrated piece All right. So once I got that, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it and just basically kind of add it to the top to the other two. Shrink it down a little bit, pull it and put it behind, and I'm going to do the same for the last one on top. Shrink it down and pull it behind. So now that I have those, I'm going to just take all three just kind of duplicate them and I just want to make sure that these are grouped so that you know it's not getting too distracting and I'm going to take these wings rotate them or flip them horizontally and plot them on the other side try to match it up to my silhouette here and now notice that these aren't clipped onto the silhouette so I'm going to go back to my silhouette and just erase out the wings since I don't really need them for this per se. And I'm going to go ahead and just start adding more pieces to this character. So I'm thinking maybe some more uh, elements towards the neck. These little techie bits might act as 
you know, some some sort of breathing apparatus or something techy. Uh, maybe a piece on the visor towards the antenna back here. So I'm just going to erase this bit out here and just try to integrate it into the helmet a little bit. And I love using this process because it's there's something really fun about integrating and using photos with paint because there is a lot of happy mistakes that you can actually find using this technique. Something that I might have drawn probably would look di very different based on, you know, just the way I use a photo because it starts to give you different ideas as opposed to a drawing is exactly what you plan for and exactly what you drafted out on paper. So I'm using the drawing, obviously the silhouette as a basis of my design, but the specific details, I'm going to let my photos help inspire that. So I'm going to do the other side of the antenna here erase out the silhouette just so that I can clearly see the head shape so let's go ahead with kind of the legs here um, I'm gonna put this into the silhouette and I'm gonna stretch out this texture um, and duplicate it and this is a great great way to kind of control your photo textures is that if you don't want to use if you don't want to use that one piece or you find that your photo that you're using is too limited or it's limiting um, you have to find creative solutions so what I like to do is I like to actually combine photos together to come up with a completely new texture because you won't always find that perfect photo or that perfect perfect piece so what I'm doing here is you know, I obviously duplicated it and um, used it for kind of the feet for my character. Going to work in t kind of the, on the, the mid torso of the character here. Just add to, uh, to the belt area. Kind of give it a little bit more complexity. maybe a little bit more on the chest area just duplicating that and see if if that looks pretty good here and notice how I actually use the same piece over and over again and this is okay because again depending on how you use the piece and where it's placed it will totally change the context of this of the piece you know I use the same piece on on the on the waist as I did on the neck duplicating it and I'm using it now on the knees and already it's totally turned into a different aesthetic it's it's turned into a different purpose you know you can't really tell that it came from the same exact piece just due to the placement I'm gonna go ahead and use part of this bottom piece here I'm just gonna rotate it down and See if I can duplicate it to get kind of this, um, I guess this kind of mid, this, this guard. I don't want it to be a garment per se, but I definitely want it to feel like it's, it's part of this armor. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that or stretch it out, see what works. Stretch it vertically. That tends to kind of give me that shape that I'm looking for paint that out here and duplicate it again and I'm always testing things out you'll notice that I'll I'll see if if you know one solution works and I'll go back and you know a lot of times with this technique you know you want to just try out different solutions because you know what you have in mind might not always work and sometimes by trying things out you can probably find a better solution so that that's why I love I love using this technique because again 
It's a lot of a lot of visual happy accidents here. It's pain in the the shape there. Okay, I'm gonna start using this, and maybe I can rotate this and use it as kind of the shoulder piece. It it just has a perfect fit. Looking at it, I'm gonna extend it just a tad bit, flip it over, and put it on the other side. And I'm thinking for the arms, I can use something a little bit more two-tone graphic. So I'm going to use another bike bike part here. Paint out the uh, the stomach area. And again, you'll notice it's a lot of painting with photos and painting on top. Again, you never want to just leave a photo as is, unless it's exactly what you're what you're looking for I'm always gonna try to paint on top of my photo textures as much as I can after the fact but just using the photos as a base is you can already see a lot of design opportunity a lot of shapes and things that you probably naturally would have wouldn't have seen okay so I'm gonna start doing the gun here and I specifically chose this texture only for the weapon just because the weapon itself I don't want it to have these flowy motorcycle lines and I'm gonna go ahead and just use part of this and stretch it over so I'm using the, uh, the smudge brush here and I want to just get that nice smooth panel and stretch it over to the back and I'm thinking that these are like these mega huge guns high caliber weapons And obviously with these types of Gundam-esque designs, you know, the the logic behind how how the weapons work is totally fictional. You know, it's it's all fantasy, right? It's all made up. So where the bullets where, where the bullet casing comes from, I have no real idea. I'm just thinking that it's it's powered by some sort of some sort of power you know it, it's it's not it's not physical bullets per se there's no bullet shells or casing so we're gonna say that it's it's all part of the suit here okay so the next I'm looking for is just another texture here that I can that I can plug on top I'm just gonna combine these together <clears throat> So it's all one texture so I can I flip it over and use it on the other side erase out the hands a little bit and I'm gonna take a part of this piece here and I'm gonna put it on top of the weapon because I think it's a little simple for me and I and I want just a little bit more complexity on the weapon and at this point I don't know if what that's gonna exactly serve whether it's a handle or if it's a scope but I know that I want some sort of texture there to kind of break up that that simplicity let's take the top railing of this of this weapon here and I'm gonna flip it on its side and I'm gonna put it into the silhouette here and I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit and duplicate it and this is gonna become the top side of my weapon design stretch it over a little bit and add it onto the other side. So again, a lot of duplicating of textures and using the smudge brush to stretch things over. Okay, so these are my parts. I've kind of consolidated them, consolidated them into a folder. This is my weapon here. I'm gonna see if there's any additional pieces. I'm probably gonna take this little bit from the magazine and just kind of warp it in place. I want I kind of want this nice little pattern here. Just to give me kind of a nice a nice little um, on the stock or something or on the back side of the weapon. Duplicate that, put it on the other side. It just suggests a lot of detail by adding these little textures. Okay, combine that. 
all right so overall it's looking pretty good but you guys can see by adding in the photos by adding in all these textures we're getting a lot of suggested detail right the only thing is when looking at something like this it literally looks confusing mainly due to the fact that there's no lighting so what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to just simplify some of this stuff I'm gonna simplify the chest area here and I think the stomach area it's looking a little complex so I think I'm just gonna keep it the simple black go to my parts and see if there's anything else that I can add at this point I think I'm going to see if there's anything I can get from the original photo texture so I always have my photo texture available because it's something that I want to always refer back to if there's anything that I missed or if there's anything that I need additional it looks like I lost the part of the wing so I'm gonna recover that in a bit but I'm gonna start getting some additional you know mechanical parts from these animatronics and I love getting these little techie bits because it helps to <clears throat> suggest a lot of you know mechanism just through visual believability just through visual hints and cues so I'm getting a lot of these little parts here that I can try to integrate into my design so I'm gonna turn off my layer and I'm gonna add this might be a really cool piece for the weapon so I'm gonna desaturate it link it over to one side and see if I can add it in to my design here and it seems to work really well um, you know instead of having just a, a simple barrel you know I kind of wanted just some more of a some cylindrical shape I'm gonna add some mechanics and hinges to this uh, to this wing here so I'm gonna sample a little bit of that black tone and kind of give it a, a slight cut and what's great about duplicating pieces you do one piece well and all you have to do is duplicate multiply it multiple times and so you already have a design and grab the other side Make sure I turn on that that wing that I lost. Got stuck in my ref my folder reference here, so I'm gonna duplicate this little mechanism, rotate it, and just try to match it. Cause this other wing is foreshortened, so I just want to make sure that you know it kind of reads correctly. Okay, we have that part, and I'm gonna add in this part here. So for this, I'm thinking that it might be cool for possibly the hand area because I haven't really resolved the hand. And this little this little bit here might be neat for maybe the upper part of the face somewhere. It just needs a lot of it just needs a little bit of those little details. And this part's really fun. I mean, adding in all those little tiny bits will really make your design come to life. Okay, I'm just going to do a simple gradient on the back so that we can start to think about lighting. Now, you can immediately see, just by adding in the darker background, my character looks incredibly flat. And there's no form, there's no lighting, everything is literally just a photo texture the lighting is all over the place nothing makes sense you know there's a lot of textures going on but visually I don't know what I'm looking at right so at this point we can start to really look at how we're gonna light this thing so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of alter the wings a little bit I wanna see if I can get a better gesture maybe make the wings a little bit larger just gonna pull it out a little bit to the side 
and let's get rid of that silhouette here so I'm just gonna select the silhouette on my original layer and just erase it out and just have a really cr clean clean crop I'm gonna erase out the top of the shoulder here and any other bit that's sticking out okay all right let's just go ahead and group these I'm gonna bring them down so I have my parts layer here and I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate and group my design here so what I like to do is I, I you know for the sake of the demo I'm obviously saving these out in stages but um, I, I like to compress my layers when I'm doing my lighting pass um, so I compress it and I like to create a layer on top that's linked within it so I can just start thinking about my shadows so I'm thinking that the lighting direction is gonna come from the top so anything that falls in shadow is gonna be you know anything that has contact shadow from the arms or panels that are overlapping so my arms here are gonna be darker and I'm gonna get a little bit of cast shadow on the weapon here and I'm thinking that the legs aren't gonna to get too much lighting so let's just highlight this here I'm gonna get more contact shadow underneath these these panels here so that the panels are floating on top get a little bit of form on the rib area and a little bit of form on the shoulder bit here make sure that's floating on top I'm gonna go ahead and just try to give this a little bit of a of a transition here and the wings I want to make sure that that back wing is behind so I'm making a selection and just doing a little quick gradient just using a soft brush I want to make sure that the wings are kind of angled paint that there just give it a soft gradient here make a selection using the lasso tool do another another gradient make sure that that looks like it's sitting behind do another selection here and darken this down and that looks like it's reading pretty well all right so from this phase I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more cast shadow and form to these pieces here and start thinking about the shadow that's on the helmet design so I'm gonna add a little bit of form here and some some shadows here add a little bit of just refine some of the edges here on the helmet top of the helmet so again you can see that it's a lot of back and forth painting but I'm mainly just thinking about kind of the shadows and just transitions here okay so you can kind of see as I turn on and off the layer so I'm gonna continue this part here add a shadow and I'm thinking it might be better to kind of round out this form a little bit and even just kind of combine those two because it's looking too segregated so I'm just gonna make that one big panel and then continue the shadow that line down Kind of give it that transition there. I'm going to go ahead and just mirror it over and do the same on the other side. I'm going to make a selection, a lasso selection, so that I can actually get a nice kind of shadow for the neck area so it looks like it's it's kind of a, a headdress wrapping around the shoulder and connecting to the back of the neck I'm gonna make a selection here 
and just give this a slight a slight gradient towards the head give it more of a darker cast shadow here a gradient just so we can really get that really get that headpiece to pop out and I'm starting to add a cast shadow from the neck here and from these little parts so that way it just doesn't look like you know the the head is completely just floating we want it to sit and you'll see me kind of go back and forth from adding soft shadows to hard shadows and that's what's going to give kind of the level of believability for these for these types of parts especially for lighting you don't want your lighting to always be these soft shadows and you don't want them to be hard shadows you want them to be a combination of hard and soft edges and that's what's going to kind of give it that level of realism so I'm going to do the uh, the crease here just to really accentuate the chest right because again this is supposed to be my version of a sexy robotic chick so obviously the chest this has to be very very important right <laughs> I think I'm just gonna kind of dial it down and just keep it more darker as opposed to highlighting it it's a little too too forced so I'm gonna go ahead and make a selection of this panel here just so I can give it a slight form give it a nice shadow here I'm going to do the same to this to this panel here. And I think a lot of this stuff here is going to be in shadow, so I'm going to go ahead and make a selection on the wings and just give it a cast shadow cuz that's not getting direct light cuz those panels that panel that I have is probably casting a shadow over that thing. So same with the same with the chest. Put a cast shadow there. More cast shadows down here. And some form shadow. This is just to help accentuate some of the panels. Because again, everything is going to look flat unless we start creating overlaps using shadows. I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit more blending here. I'm going to simplify the chest a little bit because there's so many details everywhere. And I think in order to make this design work, in order to make any design work, especially a complicated one, you want to have areas of rest and you want to have areas of detail. So that kind of having that balance really is going to help. So I'm just going to add just a couple cut lines here. And maybe something that indicates what's gonna look like a, a center line down the down the belly button area and maybe just add a little bit of a, a belly button cut line of some sort not literally a belly button but just some sort of graphic line okay I'm gonna go ahead and just add more shadow forms here and just more of a defined shadow edge on this wing let it taper back a little bit here and I'm gonna make these individual so I'm gonna try to separate them as much as I can using shadows just try to make a gradient here Maybe just a shadow on on this other side of this this helmet here. Go ahead and add just a little bit of detail. Maybe some cut lines or something. Nothing too crazy. Alright, 
I'm going to extend the, the side of this here, just color picking and painting out these panels. And at this phase, all I'm doing is I'm literally just trying to get the transitions to read. So you'll see me color picking, making things darker, or kind of merging things together. So I think the leg here needs a darker shadow. So at this point, I'm really feeling that the overall rendering is going fairly well. Um, again, I'm just mainly focused on my shadows, and I'm not really getting into sh to any to any highlights just yet. So I'm just looking at wherever I need to kind of blend the pieces, whether it's the forearm or whether it's more cast shadows. But I need to make sure that all of the design on a rendering level works with my midtones and my shadows before I do my highlights. I think the highlights is something that I like to save at the end. That way I can kind of gauge the intensity of light. And also, you know, doing the highlights is it's quite it's actually the fun part and that's something that I want I definitely want to save for last. So I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow here for the legs. Maybe it's just some tapering element for the kneecaps here. And I'm going to combine these two. Again, keep everything in a processed folder for you guys to view. So I'm going to go ahead and just start to edit some of the silhouette here. You guys can see that, you know, the original silhouette that I had is it's quite messy when we zoom in. So at this phase, I'm actually going to take a little bit of time to start cleaning up some edges. You know, adding some parts that I completely forgot about. You know, the other side of this uh, this little armor bit that's sticking out. Maybe clean that edge here. Pull back. And start really working in the hand here. I kind of want the hands to be not just loosely gestured, but maybe thinking about how the hands can be gripping this weapon or be utilizing this weapon so maybe just like how you know we would hold a handgun you know maybe this is how the the character or just the this mech naturally holds holds the weapon you know even though it's all connected to the arm maybe it's something that it's not just magically you know fires off it, it's it's actually holding it in a in a traditional gun type of position so I'm actually going to make a selection here and clean up this edge here. So I'm going to just smudge and bring that those little values over. Add more cast shadows here. And I'm just going to erase away this part because I feel like it's not really doing much. And I kind of want that nice negative shape there. And I'm going to go ahead and just start kind of blending in more of these pieces here. Try to get this highlight to taper off just a little bit. I'm going to do the same to the other side of the gun. So you guys can see as as I'm as I'm doing this process, this design, there's a lot of benefit to you know putting in all of the roughing out all of the, the the details right you know whether it's photos or whether it's you know paint strokes or whatever your process is but we know that we can actually slow down and start figuring out all the details once all the pieces are in place this phase is called refinement this is something that I want to do when I'm about 70 to 80 percent completed with my design I don't want to rush into this phase too early because we don't know what the design is going to look like or what the outcome is. So the fact that I established my silhouette and the fact that I have all of my textures in place, I'm able to make a better decision. I'm able to understand what can be edited in and what can be edited out.
and even the details themselves, I'm able to understand how much detail to put in some areas versus what to kind of keep interpretive and loose. And it always makes the, the, the painting process a lot quicker by working this way, just because you don't have to be too concerned about messing up. You know, all your all my concern and all of my my focus and attention is going into just refining the details. And honestly, I mean, at this point, it's just it's all it's all kind of laborious. You know, I did a lot of the hard part, which is the silhouette design. I, I think that's one of the most important parts of design. Um, and then really thinking about kind of the materials and the textures. That's the second most important. And then from there, it's just really refining the design. It's refining the edges and just kind of illustrating it. So at this phase, you know, I'm just, I would be bumping music, you know, or have like a cool documentary playing on the background, whatever it is that will keep your, keep your brain, you know, not from like dozing off too much. Um, you know, I like, I like kind of listening to, you know, audio documentaries something that I can focus my attention to the artwork um, rather than having a movie playing on the background um, so that way I can kind of listen in but not but just focus on my my painting here okay so um, at this phase and it's looking pretty good I I think um, I'm ready to start thinking about lighting here so I duplicated the image here and I'm gonna start lighting the character from top down and start working in the highlights so I just I'm using a, a round brush with um, on a color dodge mode and I selected a background and I'm just kind of hitting areas where I think can utilize some nice highlights so I'm adding in little pings here in the head in the chest area the, the breastplate and I'm pulling back to see what what reads and maybe one highlight can be brighter on one side. And then just on this little shoulder plate here too, I think it'd be nice to have a nice highlight that really shows off the form. And maybe just some little little pings here and there that's really catching a strong highlight. Anything that's catching some edge light here, I'm definitely going to give it a little bit of a highlight, whether it's on this side of the panel or on the side of the hip. I'm just going to make a selection here and just kind of give it a nice little gradient, little kick of light right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and chop this off here um, because I think that part of the foot felt a little weird to me. So I'm just going to make a selection and chop it off and try to put it behind the foot to kind of give it a, a better streamlined look for the leg. Add a little bit more of a highlight on the face, the head plate there. Gonna kind of erase away some of the detail here I think it's nice there's something really nice about the simplicity on the helmet I think it got a little too detailed and darken this side of the, uh, the little visor or that little uh, the ear piece and then I'm just gonna flatten out the back ends of this weapon and add maybe just a little a little rail something to kind of give it an extra little shape Okay, and then from this point on, um, I need to add kind of the tip of the weapon, so the barrel. So I'm just going to go ahead and just indicate a barrel of some sort before I forget, because right now it's just kind of loose blobs. Just going to cut that out, add a barrel here, and I'm just going to kind of refine 
just little bits of detail again at this point you can spend anywhere from a couple of hours to a couple of days refining your design so it's just a matter of what it is and how tight you want to really take your design and how meticulous you want to be with with this thing so I'm just kind of doing you know a lot of shadows and lights but you know if we really get down to the details I can really kind of noodle this thing to death but we're just gonna try to look at the overall image and see what needs tweaking so I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little splash of color I think it might be cool to add just some little pops of light here kind of see how that looks you know these little magenta lights maybe something on the on the face or something or maybe something towards the the head these little lights towards the neck and I think it might be cool to make these a lot more obvious so instead of little little blings of light I'm gonna make them more neon lights kind of give it like that techno techno look and then maybe some light patterns or something or some something to kind of give it a less monochromatic look so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on overlay and just kind of give it a wash of color make it a little brighter so that I can make those stripes more apparent maybe color the knees and see how, how that looks but I think it's a little too colorful so I'm just gonna keep it dial down and just keep it in this area all right just a couple last minute tweaks I'm gonna darken down that leg a little bit darken down this side of the the gun you know this side of the uh, this side of the body here and so at this phase I'm just really trying to look at lighting as a whole because I don't want to get too overly exposed with the character I don't want to show off everything I just want to show off mainly the focal point and the focal point is going to be the torso the head and just some areas that I want to really highlight so what I'm doing here is I'm actually doing just a little bit of a, a fakey fakey highlight here just to kind of give it that reflective look so I'm just using a lasso and I have my brush setting on on color dodge or screen either either of those work really well and I'm just kinda loosely just indicating just some extra forms and highlights so that pretty much concludes the demo guys I hope you guys enjoyed um, if you guys have any questions feel free to email me at jparked um, at brainstorm at jparked at gmail.com or my personal email at jp for john park at gmail.com um, these videos will be available not only on my patreon but also on gumroad um, thank you again for watching i'll see you next time